kids, welcome to another great church service. So excited today to share with you a Bible story, some awesome praise and worship, and then a really cool lesson. I know Jorge's excited. Jorge, do you really enjoy the Bible story? How about the praise and worship? Is that pretty fun for you? And what about the lesson, Jorge? Are you excited for the lesson? Wow, it looks like Jorge's excited. So sit right back, kids, as we go through everything, and later in, we'll check in with Jorge, too. God bless you, and have a great day. Bye. Hey, kids. I hope you are ready to hear another Bible story this week. Okay, what's the theme we have been talking about this whole month? Any guesses? That is correct. It's Gifts of the Spirit. And do you know what is that we're going to talk today? It's about gifts that show something. What does that mean? What story are we going to talk about? Let's get back, right? So after Jesus went up to heaven, the word of God was spreading across in all the places and the early church was getting increased in number. So does the persecution. People were like troubling the early church and they were spread across Jerusalem and they were going away from Jerusalem also. There was one disciple, his name was Philip. He was sharing the word of God. He was sharing his word in Samaria. And then one day, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and told, you get up from here and go to Jerusalem in, in the road of uh, Samaria. He was like wondering, okay, this is something, we know there is persecution in Jerusalem and God is asking me to go there in the road of Gaza. I don't know, but still, he obeyed the word of God. He obeyed to the voice of God. And all he did is he stood up and he started walking towards the place. Now, as he was walking, there was a person who was crossing him by. And he was an Ethiopian and he was sitting in his chariot. He had a good position and he was sitting in his chariot and going through. Now, he again heard the voice of God asking him, to go and talk to that Ethiopian. Now, obviously for Philip, this road itself is a scary one and going to talk to that person was a little challenging, but still he did obey again. And he went and spoke to that person. And for his uh, news and for his uh, joyful, he was reading from Isaiah and he was talk reading about it, but he was not understanding. So when Philip asked him, hey, what is that you're reading? He's like, I'm just reading the scripture, but I don't understand what it is because I don't have anyone to tell me. Then what Philip did is he stood up and he went and sat with him and he was explaining all that about. And they were talking about how Jesus came to the world and how he will be dying for each and every one of us. So this Ethiopian was like, who is that person who is so selfless, who is able to spare, die for me, who is ready to give her, himself for me? And then Philip was able to share the good news to him. And he told who Jesus is, how he came to this universe and how he died on the cross for each and every one of us. This made that Ethiopian feel like, oh, I want this Jesus. Oh, I want this Jesus in my life. And he accepted Jesus at that moment. See, an obedience, a word of wisdom that came out of Philip has made someone to accept Jesus and how heavens would have rejoiced knowing that someone got saved, right? And this Ethiopian said, okay, there is a water. Why don't I get baptized immediately? And he got baptized and that Ethiopian was filled with joy. Wow. That's awesome, right? A small gift that he had, a small gift and an obedience to do an experience and do that gift had made someone come to the knowledge of God. So God has invested gift in each and every one of us, right? A word of wisdom or maybe it's something that you can help somebody with. But all that small, small gift what God has put in, it will help someone and they will be blessed and you can also share the good news like how Philip shared. I'm sure this story blessed you and you're going to hear 
lot about it as you go through the Bible lesson. So stay tuned and have rest of the good time together. Wow friends, wasn't that an amazing Bible lesson? Now we're going to get off our feet and praise and worship.
Wasn't that an amazing praise and worship? Now sit down, grab your Bibles, and get ready to hear an amazing Bible lesson. Hey, boys and girls, I'm so glad that you're with us again this morning in our build time with the Word, in our build time of fun, in our build time of worship. I hope you've really been enjoying this month's theme on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember what Paul said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. He says, now brothers, I don't want you to be misinformed or uninformed about spiritual gifts. That's right. God wants us to know all about spiritual gifts so if he wants to use us with a spiritual gift we know what God says in his word isn't that exciting well I have a great story to tell you to help us learn more about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and boy I can't wait to tell you more and I know you know who I'm gonna talk about today don't you Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam our two favorite underwater characters they're so so fun aren't they well I need to tell you a story one day Frankie and Joey were at the Jellyfish Junior High. That's right, they're not un at the Underwater Academy anymore. They graduated, they're in junior high school. They're like big, big people now. And they were at the Jellyfish Junior High and everybody in the class was, was talking and buzzing all day about this flyer that they saw. And they were talking about this fun summer camp that they were, everyone wanted to go to when school let out for the summer. And so Frankie the, and uh, the lobster and Joey the clam, they were very, very intrigued. They were interested. What is this camp all about? So one of their friends, actually their cousin, you remember cousin Bobby the Blowfish? That's right, Bobby the Blowfish got the flyer and he said, look, look, I finally got one. There were so many kids grabbing for them. I got one of the flyers. And they started reading the flyer about the summer camp and they started talking about it and they noticed on the bottom it was at a very very interesting place this summer camp where do you think the summer camp was at that's right the sea of galilee summer camp it's a camp that they had every year for kids that were in junior high school and there was fun there was games there was sports that they played there was crafts there was swimming and hiking all kinds of fun stuff even riding big uh, sea turtles it would not be exciting so all this stuff was prepared and planned for the the uh, the Sea of Galilee summer camp so they really really wanted to go now you know exactly what they did don't you they hustled home they ran home so fast they could barely keep up with each other Frankie ran ahead of Joey then Joey ran ahead of Frankie then Frankie ran ahead of Joey until they made it all the way home to 44 eel Cove Drive. That's right. That's where they lived. 44 Eel Cove Drive. And they rushed through the door, basically breaking into each other to get through the doorway. And they got through the doorway and they mom, 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 we're so excited. There's an opportunity. We can do something for the summer. We can go away and spend the entire summer at the Galilee uh, summer camp, Galilee Sea summer camp. And they, mom was really concerned because boys, you've never really slept away for more than a night at, your, at maybe Bobby the Blowfish, your cousin's house. You've never been away for a whole summer. First of all, we would miss you. And they're like, come on, mom, there's fun, there's games. Yes, boys, but I wanna make sure that you're always learning about God and learning about God's word. And guess what? Frankie said, that's the best part of it, mom. Every day they have what they call a chapel service and they teach us God's word. 
can you please talk to dad? Can you please, please ask him if we can go? And so mom did. She talked to dad. And at the end of the night, at the end of the night, they came to the kids, Frankie and Joey, and said, you know what? We thought about it and we think it might be a good idea, Frankie and Joey, for you guys to go to the, to the summer camp, the Sea of Galilee summer camp this year. And you'll have a lot of fun if you promise us that you'll go to chapel service every day and learn God's word. We promise, we promise, we promise. So what do you think happens? The end of the school year comes. It's time for graduation. It's time for summer vacation. And the boys are so excited, they can't wait. So they know that was a Friday and they know Saturday morning, the Sea Turtle Express is coming to take them directly to the Sea of Galilee summer camp. Wouldn't that be a lot of fun? So they're waiting and waiting and waiting and, and all of a sudden they see a caravan of sea turtles making their way to their house at 44 Eel Cove Drive. And they see all their friends on different sea, uh, sea turtles and it, they're so excited. And so they run outside and they give their mom and dad a big kiss. They jump on a sea turtle and all off they go to the Sea of Galilee summer camp. Boy, they were so excited and they were really excited that Bobby the Blowfish, their cousin's mom said he can go as well. So they were gonna be the whole summer of fun and sun and pool and, and, and turtle riding and seahorse riding. Could you imagine how exciting that was, boys and girls? So off they go to the trek and it took a few hours for them to get all the way to the Sea of Galilee summer camp. And they finally make it there and they get out off their turtles and, and they see the, ca the camp advisors and they get them into their dorms where they're gonna sleep and they set them all up and they say, okay, you're all ready now. Be meet us for lunch at 12 o'clock in the cafeteria. So at 12 o'clock, all the boys and girls made their way to the cafeteria. Sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? So they eat their food, they have a wonderful time, and then they hear, today at one o'clock, everybody has to go to chapel service. So what do you think, Frankie, Frankie the lobster and Joey the clam, they said to Bobby the blowfish, listen, we promised mom and dad that we would go to chapel service. And so they did. I know you thought maybe they tried to skip out, but they didn't, they were obedient. And they went to chapel service. And as they were at chapel service, they had such an amazing time because they realized something. Guess what? The person teaching chapel was their coach from high school football, from junior high football. It was their coach. Could you imagine? It was coach Stevie Stingray. He was there and he was teaching them. And you know what? The lesson that day was a great story in the Bible about a prophet named Elisha. You remember Elisha the prophet? Oh yeah, he did double the miracles that Elijah did. But Elisha the prophet, in this story, in the book of Kings, there was a king in a bad land that was after Israel and was making war for Israel every day. And really they wanted to kill and destroy and take over all the people of Israel. Isn't that a bad thing? Yeah, it was really, really a bad thing. So Coach Stevie Stingray is teaching them that as this was happening, and uh, they did this like three or four different times, as this was happening, Elisha the prophet would pray. And Elisha the prophet, as he was praying, say as he was praying, everybody, as he was praying, God, would speak to him through one of the gifts of the Spirit. You know, one of the revelation gifts, right? A word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, or discerning of spirits. Those are the three, uh, those are the three revelation gifts. And God would speak to Elisha the prophet through a revelation gift, through a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. And he would say, Elisha, the bad king, is setting up an ambush to attack Israel in this location. So make sure that you warn the people. And what do you think would happen? They'd warn the people and the bad king would say, it seems like this, the, the, the people from Israel are in my bedroom at night. What's happening? Are one of my leaders friends with the Israelites? And they said, no, 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 king. What's happening is there's a prophet in Israel. His name is Elisha. And every time the king plans something in his bedroom or plans war, even though you think it's secret, 
God speaks to the prophet Elisha through a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom and lets him know your plan of what you're going to do and how you're going to attack the people. And could you imagine? Frankie the lobster and Joey the clam and Bobby the blowfish, their eyes were this big. They were like, wow, we never even heard a story like that in the Bible. Yep, it's in the Bible. It's in the book of Kings. And that's exactly what God did. So guess what else happens here? So when this is going on and the boys are at camp, do you remember Wally Whale, the bully from school? Well, he didn't go to the Sea of Galilee. He didn't go to the Sea of Galilee summer school, summer camp. He didn't do that at all. He stayed home and he, he found a guy called Bart the Barracuda. Did you ever hear of Bart? Well, he's a sneaky old thief and he does things when people aren't watching and he does things when people are asleep. And sneaky old Bart the Barracuda, when all the boys and girls were at, at the uh, summer camp enjoying a wonderful time and learning God's word, Wally the whale thought, here's a way I can make some money. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell Bart to join me. And when all the kids are away, I'm going to have him swim into all the neighborhoods where the kids are away and go into their garage or their sheds and steal their bikes. <gasps> Could you imagine that? And that's exactly what they were doing. They were stealing bikes. And what they planned on doing is stealing all these bikes, getting a bunch of bikes, and then going on the underwater internet and telling people that they had like new bikes for sale for 50% off. Could you imagine? That's really wicked and really evil. Don't you agree? So this was going on and they were stealing bikes and selling bikes. And the kids that were in the, the Jellyfish Junior High that were at the summer camp were just having fun. They didn't even know this was going on. But somehow word got back to Stevie Stingray, their, their, their football coach, that this is what was happening. And he told the kids in one of the chapel service that this is what's happening. They're, they're, this, they're, we don't know who it is, but somebody's sneaky and stealing bikes. So you ready for this? So the boys go home and they're really nervous thinking about, oh my gosh, Frankie and Joey and, and Bobby, your bike is in our shed as well. And we got brand new, beautiful 10 speed mountain bikes and we don't want anyone to steal those bikes. We're really nervous. Maybe we should go home. This is a scary thing. Maybe we should just go home from camp. And Stevie the Stingray, Coach Stevie Stingray said, don't do that boys. You need to trust the Lord. So guess what happens? The boys are praying that night and they fall asleep. And when they fall asleep, all of a sudden in a dream, each one of them have the same dream. How is that possible? With God, all things are possible. Each one of them had a dream. And the dream was they saw Wally the whale, the bully from our other stories. And they saw him paying Bart the Barracuda money to steal bikes at night. They saw this. God gave them a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom what was gonna happen in the future. So what happens? God in this dream shows the boys that their next place they were gonna hit, the next target was 44 Eel Cove Drive. Where's 44 Eel, Eel Cove Drive? That's Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam's house. So they tell Coach Steve Stingray in the morning, this is what we saw in a dream and you were teaching us about the prophet Elisha and how God warned Israel about things that were going to happen. Well, we just got warned about something that's going to happen. So what do you think they do? They call Sheriff Swordfish right away and say, tonight is the night. And they see Sheriff Swordfish says, how do you know that? Well, God spoke to the boys in a dream, in a revelation gift and showed them what was going to happen. So what happens? What do you think happens? Sheriff Swordfish takes him and his deputies and they go and hide in the garage at Frankie the Lobster and Joey the Clam's house. And they wait there with flashlights in hand, but off. And all of a sudden, guess what happens? Bart the Barracuda opens that door and tries to sneak in. And boom, the lights go on. And, they, and, and Sheriff Swordfish goes, get him, boys. And they get Bart and they lock him up. And they find out that Wally the Whale had this complete 
underground network of internet thievery going on and he was selling the bikes. And both Wally, wow, and Bart the Barracuda, wow, went to jail. Isn't that an amazing story? How God spoke to the boys, Frankie, uh, Joey, Joey the Clam, Frankie the Lobster, and Bobby the Blowfish to protect them by a gift of the Spirit. God still speaks today, boys and girls, by gifts of the Spirit through dreams and other ways. But always, 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 it always lines up with the Bible and God's Word because God wouldn't show us something outside of His Word. So the boys were happy. They came home from summer camp. They had their bikes. And guess what? Sheriff was able to find the network and get all the boys and girls bikes back and everybody in the town was happy. That's a fantastic story, isn't it boys and girls? Well, remember what we said in the beginning, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number one, Paul the apostle said, I don't want you to be misinformed about spiritual gifts. So that's why we need to know God helps us even at times through spiritual gifts, amen? Isn't that a great story? Well, here's what I want to say to you today. If you're watching right now or, or you're in build ministry right now or, or you're watching this video for the first time, I want to say something to you. If you don't know the Lord in your heart, you could do that today. You can ask him into your heart today. So I want to ask you, do you want to take a moment and pray with Pastor Donnie? And be like Frankie the Lobster, Joey the Clam, and, and Bobby the Blowfish. They all accepted the Lord as their saviors. So I'm going to pray this prayer with you. If you'll repeat after me, it's time we accept Jesus in our hearts. Amen. Amen. So pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I have done bad things and sinned because everybody has. Go ahead and say that. But I thank you, Father, for sending Jesus, your son, to die for me in my sin. I accept Jesus now in my heart. Jesus, be my Lord and be my Savior. I surrender to you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Isn't that great, girl, boys and girls? Well, I hope you tune in next time and I hope you share this video with somebody real soon. Well, kids, that was a wonderful time we just had together. So excited. Jorge, did you enjoy it? Excellent, Jorge. And for you kids there, if you want to get involved in children's ministry, just call that number that's on the screen right now. And remember, everything's on YouTube, so you can watch this as many times as you want. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And Jorge and I will see you next time for another exciting church service. Take care. Bye-bye.